Can a disability insurance policyholder get copies of recordings or transcripts of phone calls with a disability carrier? The five takeaways from the new ruling from the Department of Labor. Did you know the calls with your disability insurance company adjuster are regular occurrences and they're recorded? When you apply for your disability insurance benefits, you can be guaranteed that you're going to be called by the disability carrier at some point to take your statement or answer questions. In fact, when you complete an activity of daily living form, you're probably going to be called and asked for clarification. When you've just seen the doctor for follow-up care, you might be called for an update. You'll be talking with the carrier more than you talk with your mother or your best friend. However, these calls are not social calls. What you say will be used against you, guaranteed. But are you entitled to a copy of the recordings or the transcripts of the phone call with a disability carrier? Disability carriers will tell you, no, we only record these calls for quality assurance or training purposes, and we're not making a benefit determination based on this call. Bullshit. The Department of Labor, Employment Benefits, Security Administration, the EBSA, has just addressed this very issue in a June 14, 2021 opinion. So what does it say? What it says is that the information that the disability carrier gathers in this call is relevant if it was generated in the course of making a benefit determination, regardless of whether the carrier used it or relied on it. Disability insurance companies are not in the business of paying you benefits. They have an obligation to disclose information demonstrating compliance with administrative process and safeguards. And these recordings or that are allegedly made for training purposes or quality assurance are falling within this new compliance standard. The disclosure requirement isn't limited to just paper or to written materials. It includes video, audio, and other electronic media, and <clears throat> disability carriers have an obligation to provide it to you. Now, even if the recordings are not regularly included in their claims file, they still have a duty to produce it. Ask and you should receive. Just be sure to ask the disability carrier in a certified mail return receipt requested letter for this information. In fact, you want a copy of your entire file. Filing an appeal of your denied ERISA disability group insurance uh, claim can be difficult. If you've got a group disability plan or policy through your employer, your claim is governed by the complex federal law known as the Employer Retirement Income Security Act, the ERISA Act. If you filed your own application, and your claim has been denied or your benefits have been terminated, you're only going to have 180 days in which to file an appeal. An appeal is the trial of your case, and it's time for you to hire an experienced disability attorney who will get a copy of that disability carrier's file material, including copies of the recordings, transcript of the recorded statements, and other relevant material. Remember, as I've said, this appeal is the trial of your case. I do this day in and day out, and my appeal letters are 25 to 65 pages long. They're full of factual, legal, medical, and vocational reason why the carrier's claim denial is wrong and should be reversed. As I said, you're only going to have 180 days to file an appeal, and if you don't, your case is over. So don't delay. Call me today at 727-894-3188 for a complimentary consultation. I can help you get the disability benefits you deserve, regardless of where you live in the United States.